Hello and welcome to the Week 8 Recap. Hello everyone, welcome to the wait the week eight recap. Your host, Michael Kilroy, or whatever I call myself, I don't remember. Mongo or Dan and Kevin Chen. Or Kevin Chen, if you want to call him. Kevin E. Chen. Thank you very much. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. Can't forget that E. So welcome everyone. Welcome back. Week eight was um a sad one for our Knicks, but that is okay. Because they are, according to Kevin, he looked this up before the we started. They are at the same point uh, through 27 games as they were last year. And uh, they were 12 and 15 after 27 last year. So that's a not a bad, it's not terrible, but uh, not good either. We'll talk, we'll, we'll go, we'll dive deep, uh, a little bit deeper. We'll get into that there we, when we go through the standings. Yeah. So uh, let's get into this. We got in the Atlantic at 18 and 8 and 4. First in the Atlantic and first in the Eastern Conference, the Brooklyn Nets, 15 and 12. We got the 76ers. Then we got the Boston Celtics at 13 and 14, the Toronto Raptors at 12 and 14, and the New York Knicks at 12 and 15. So, uh, again, the Celtics and Knicks are about where we expected them to be around the same. Uh, Only surprise for me is still the Raptors are somehow still... Hovering around 500. I don't know how this team does not seem to have much, but but Scotty Barnes is just destroying the NBA. Yeah, I, it's it's a matter of time here. I mean, uh, every time you make me look like an idiot, Raptors. The team I want to question here, though, is the Nets. Not not question them per se, because obviously the results are there. But uh, today is officially one of the few times they're giving James Harden a day of rest. Uh, they're playing as we speak. What were you waiting for? We're a third of the way into the season. You're clearly running away with this thing. Now you give them a rest. Be smart about this. We saw what happened in the playoffs when you don't have healthy people. Please just, I'm a Knicks fan, and I'm just telling you, Nets, as somebody who likes watching greatness prevail in the NBA, be smart about this. Give James Harden more rest than that. You, Kevin, anything you want to add? I, I just I think the big thing from last year, or, or the big thing this year from last year is while the Knicks have the same record, twelve and fifteen, as they did at the tw- same twenty-seven game point last year, the big problem is that everyone else in the East caught up and passed them for the moment. The Knicks are sitting twelfth in the con, twelfth in the conference right now, and that's not going to get you a playoff spot. So they got to mm-hmm. kick their butts into gear. Unfortunately, it will not. But uh, good news is it. That both they have two first rounders uh, this, this draft, I think. Yeah, let's already look ahead to twenty twenty three. I'm all about it. No, uh, it's not it's, lost. It yet. is too early for uh, to panic as a Knicks fan. Uh, they can always turn this around. Uh, boy, don't forget we had a few players out this afternoon with uh, COVID issues with uh, Toppin and um, Burks, and uh, I'm forgetting somebody. You're forgetting RJ. Oh yeah, Barrett. Yeah, the, the Knicks had three players out this afternoon. So, uh, you know, Quentin Grimes and Derrick Rose actually started today. So Quentin Grimes set a uh, Knicks rookie record, record seven rookie three record pointers, I think it was. Points, yeah. Um, On to the central, we have the Bucks, eighteen and ten, back in first where we expected them. Chicago, seventeen and ten, half game back. Cleveland, sixteen and twelve. Uh, Evan Mobley is a beast, and the team seems to be playing well. And then we got the Pacers, who, uh, well, we'll talk about them later, but they are currently 12-16, and 16, and everyone's favorite, Detroit Pistons. Uh, they're 4-12, and 12, yeah, I'll, 21. I'll take the reins here. I want to I wanna buck a trend of people who talk about sports uh, trying to dodge bullets and trying to change their tone. I'll just come right out and say it. I could not have been more humanly wrong about the Detroit Pistons. Dear, dear Lord. They have the worst I'm, record. I'm sorry, team. everybody. If, if anybody watched in August and said, this guy knows what he's talking about, I think I'll sneak a couple dollars on the Pistons to make the playoffs. Sorry. Just, just sorry. Are you, my, my bad, guys. Are you willing to say the same thing about the Cleveland Cavaliers? Or do you still think it's? No. And because I have, I have a theory here which is, I've, I've said all along, half the league does not care about the regular season, which means naturally 
bullying, not bullying, but you know what I mean by this. Bullying can come into play. The strongest team, the youngest team, the most athletic team will just naturally win more games in the regular season because if everyone doesn't care, just raw skill will prevail. And so the team that's starting a boatload of centers will naturally have an advantage when teams aren't actively trying to play their best. So I, I, I'm I'm more and more buying into the idea that Cleveland can sustain a playoff-worthy record in the regular season. But, man, they are easily getting swept in the playoffs if they make it. Not a, not a chance they win a playoff game. A game? I mean – No, I'll say it. They get swept. I'll oh. say it right here. Or is it December 12th? Not a chance they win a playoff p.m. Game. Okay. Um, I'd like to point out that the uh, Bucks, Bulls, and Cavaliers are two, three, and five in the conference standings, respectively. At the well, to the southeast, we got the Miami Heat, 16 and 11. Washington Wizards, still doing pretty hot, 15 and 12. Charlotte, 15 and 13. Atlanta, 13 and 13. And the Magic, not in last place in the east. They are five and 22. They have one more win and one more loss than the Detroit Pistons. I'm actually clapping it up because our our boy, Franz Wagner, please come on the show, buddy. Franz Wagner, as of uh, about five minutes ago, I guess he played today, uh, now leads the all-rookies in total points. Not points per game, but just total number of points. So congrats, Franz, for at least at the moment until some other rookie plays tonight. You're doing something good. I'd also one, like to two, point out yeah. that in, in this division, the Southeast has four teams that are currently in the top 10. Heat, Wizards, Hornets, Hawks at 4, 7, 8, and 9, respectively. I mean, Never thought just, I would say that this year. That's just how math works. Right? Because if the other ones each have – never mind. Sorry, that sounded mean. I didn't mean well, to be well, mean. Well, we didn't mention we didn't mention that the other t- divisions had three teams each. You but know I just wanted to clarify. an apology. I think you should buy us all Franz Wagner jerseys. I am not paying <laughs> like seven, like, like three hundred dollars. You don't have to pay. You just have to send Franz Wagner a very nice note asking for three jerseys. <laughs> and it's just postage. It's just postage and your words. Franz, if you're out there, help him out. Send him a letter for him to then send you a letter. Become <laughs> buddies and then send us jerseys. I know you're listening, Franz. <laughs> On to the Western Conference. <laughs> Franz, Franz, the West is the part where your team doesn't win, in case you're wondering geographically where the West is in, in America. Northwest, we got the Jazz at 19 and 7. Ooh, Ooh that's getting scary. <laughs> the Denver Nuggets, 13 and 13. Ooh, that's getting mediocre. <laughs> Portland Trail Blazers, 11 and 15. Ooh, they're also here. <laughs> Minnesota is also 11 and 15. And OKC is 8 and 17. My, my boys. Oh. All Portland, of them. if I could I root believe, for five teams at once, I'd root for this division. So, I believe four, Portland has the tiebreaker right now due to a better division record, one and two versus zero oh and two, with one win. Well, hmm. we'll talk about these guys later. Uh, yeah, yeah, they get their own category this week. Don't worry, yeah, the whole West gets we're, its own category this week. We're just gonna give a quick shout out since since we got to say something here. Shout out to the Jazz for just doing their job. Bravo, Jazz! Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, you're doing what Dallas is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice to see somebody. We knew there was a safe bet somewhere in the West. Turns out it was the Jazz. Who knew? Uh, uh, speaking of of the Mavericks, we're gonna move on to the Southwest because uh, we got to leave the most interesting division for for last. <laughs> Uh, we got here the uh, Memphis Grizzlies sitting at 16 and 11. The Dallas Mavericks, 12 and 13. Mm-hmm. San Antonio, 9 and 16. Houston, 8 and 18. Then we got the Pelicans at 8 and 20. Um, the Rockets, after setting an NBA, uh, being the first team in NBA history to lose 11, I believe it was, and then go on a seven game win streak, only to now be back on a two game blue streak. Uh, congratulations, Houston. You're a very weird team. Uh, you're trying to tank, but you're also trying to bur- you're also trying to win enough games to make it look like you're not tanking. <laughs> and then there's the Pelicans, who are missing the uh, um, now allegedly 330 plus pound Zion Williamson. Let's let's have some fun. Let's let's look back at the tape later and see who was right. I'm going to hold everybody to this, Kevin. I'm going to come to you first on this. Oh, well, I was going to make a quick update. The Rockets actually lost 15 games in a row, 
and then won like seven games in a row. So Thank you. I Fair just enough. wanted to make sure that that was accurate. Kevin, higher number at the end of the season. Pelicans winning percentage, Zion's weight. Zion's weight. Zion's weight. I'm going to take the Pelicans winning percentage, but it's not going to be it's current, terribly okay. distant. But even right now, their current winning percentage is 286. So if, if that gets that up, is 50 I, less than I his think, weight. I think the Pelicans can get to like 302 and he can get to like 298. I don't think he can get to 298. I, I think, think this horrible. is a, Zion, lose, some, okay. lose a couple pounds for me, baby. I don't even know if he's going to play this year. I think he can do it. Right. I would like yeah, to point out that he's... there was. Okay, so I would like to point out that there was a player in the past that you guys might not have heard of. His name was Oliver Miller. He had good promise in his beginning part of his career and then ate himself out of the out of the league. He was yeah, North Oliver like, Miller wasn't the number one pick, nor was he ever looked at as a franchise cornerstone. There's a big difference there. The <laughs> team won't let Zion eat his way out of the league. He's like closer to, uh, to Tractor Trailer. Yeah, that, exactly. Oliver Miller to Tractor Trailer is a much fairer comparison. Um the, the team is the difference really, isn't that really quite that big, but go ahead. In Zion, that's that's why I think eventually Zion once, is more like Eddie Curry. Once they feel that Ooh. Zion is ready to come back, they will make sure that they do what they need to, to do, strength and conditioning wise, because they are take Zion out of the future of the Pelicans. What are they? They are they are absolutely nothing. They are eight and twenty. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, my mistake. Look at this year, and you see what they are without Zion. They need him. Zion needs them. I mean, he needs to prove. He needs to get back on the court to prove he that he's worth know, a second. He, he, he just needs to go to. He just needs to get on the court. He doesn't necessarily need to be with them. Exactly. But where no one's trading for him right now. What's I mean, his, what's his, his, what's his, his draft easy... stock keeps dropping. Right, but th- what's his easiest path back to the court? Getting healthy with the Pelicans. Yeah. That is, yes. I don't Agreed. know if that's, I, I'm not quite sure if that's going to be uh, what will end up happening, though. I do find um, it dis, I do find it disconcerting that he keeps having the I- issues in his foot after he's as, as he's trying to come back this season. So something's going I mean, on. Call there. me cynical, but I, I I do think part of it is he doesn't want to play for the Pelicans and he's using this as his leverage to try to get out. But but in a quieter but, way than Ben Simmons, you're saying. I mean, you look at yeah. John Wall, though. It's the same idea. He has to play at some point. He will. He will play at some point. But he I, he's going to take his time, yeah. come back when the team is – I mean, at this point, they're pretty much out of the playoffs uh, postseason anyway. But until, when they're out of the playoffs, come in, average 25-plus points, like 10 rebounds on like – some on. A ridiculous shooting percentage and lose a couple pounds and win a couple games. I'm feeling good about my prediction. I think. Right, anyway. Well, I think the biggest difference is John Wall and the Rockets came to that agreement, and now both sides are revisiting that agreement. Whereas yeah, the no, other the situations, issue, well, it's also are a, big a little bit more is, contentious. The, also, the bigger difference is the fact that John Wall's owed like the second lo- most money out of all NBA million. Players. Well, the other big difference is that when Houston looks in a crystal ball and sees itself winning in the future, it doesn't see John Wall there. When the exactly. Pelicans look in the future as a and see themselves winning, they see Zion being part of that. The big difference is that Zion is supposed to be part of the Pelicans' future. Yeah. On to the Pacific. We got the Suns. No surprise here. First place. Congratulations. Still keep it up. The good work after going to the finals. They are 21-4. and four. Right behind them on their heels, we got the Golden State Warriors at twenty-one and five, a half game back. They did just lose a game. Um, now we got the Clippers at fifteen and twelve. Paul George, congratulations! You are my favorite for MVP. Uh, <laughs> Lakers are above five hundred at fourteen sure. and thirteen, and Sacramento is staying alive somehow at eleven and sixteen. They are right at the just on the cusp of uh, they must be like the number 11, I think. Yeah, so Sacramento is a half game back of number 10 Minnesota Timberwolves for that 10th. That 10th, so this would break their streak of 16 seasons, 15 or 16 seasons of not making the playoffs. I'm gonna double check that right now. So we need to check a couple things here. Uh, Kevin, first of all, confirm that making the play in constitutes making the playoffs. Secondly, we've post season. They'll be post season. We've we've talked about this before in the, and we're going to talk more about this later when we talk about the East and the West strengths. 
Right now, there are about four teams playing for the right to lose to Portland by 70 points in the in the postseason. The 10 seed this year is very obtainable for a lot of these teams, but not because any of these teams are particularly good, more so because by rule, 10 teams have to make the postseason. So keep on keeping on Sacramento. But, you know, if you're a Kings fan, if you're a Timberwolves fan, even if you're a Spurs fan, don't for a minute, you know, get excited and, and say, you know, my team's a postseason team. No, your team just happens to be the best of the seven bad teams. I don't know, but I would still be happy if I was a Kings fan because it's been like 15 years. For the Kings, it's a little bit different because you're finally at least ending the drought in that sense. But, you know, they say, well, there's still merit in making the playoffs and growing from it. This is something totally different. This is a one-game playoff. This is a wild card game in that sense. And I get that there's still 83 games is more experience than 82 games. I get how math works. But you're you're not learning much from going and getting blown out by Dame Willard by 40 in one game. You know, until the you until you can actually get into a series, you're not doing much, much, much. I'd almost rather be in the lottery. I'll just say it. All right. So the Kings have missed the playoffs. Uh, tying the record 15 straight times. And the way the play-in tournament was explained last year, they said the the way it's explained, it seems like the play-in tournament is not officially the playoffs, per se. So a spot in the play-in tournament does not necessarily, according according no, to what I'm seeing. Season, and that's what, the, it, that's what matters. Yeah. Um, so, all right, let's, let's go on to on the list. The I-80 Sports Traffic Report, where you can find all your news and notes from the week. The list. There we go. That traffic seems so familiar. <laughs> yeah. How many, how many of us have driven on, <laughs> on I-80? I have. You know, where, you know where there wasn't traffic today? Leaving the jet game. Man, that place cleared out by about the third quarter. <laughs> I can't imagine why. <laughs> that was that was oh, what was the final 39 30 to 9. I, yes. I blacked out at about 3 nothing. I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and you were, really and you were at really the game. On that one. But let's bring this back, guys. All right. So let's start off. Um, this one was not on the list. It was a late ad. Uh, congratulations to Zach Randolph. The Memphis Grizzlies have retired to the number 50. In honor of him, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he gets to be the guy who holds the sign. No, oh, congrats, now, Randall. if you look at the way it is, it looks like he just has uh, got uh, platinum on, on an album. So it just like <laughs> it looks like a platinum album. Cool. So good for him. He also has. He's also uh, sold a platinum. Wouldn't surprise if you told me Zach Randolph could rap. I would not be surprised. He's actually. Uh, he's actually the. Uh, he's actually a country singer. I will say this, Zach. Zach Randolph. Um, I missed him. In in the vein, Tim Duncan was the best at this. Big men who you would watch and just be watching the game and not really be paying attention. And then you look at the box score and go, 30 and 15, when did that happen? Zach Randolph, very quiet stat collector in games where he was collecting stats. You didn't actively notice Zach Randolph was dropping a 25 and 10 on you. And then you'd be like, oh, yeah, that guy's He was a 2010 king. He was was very stealthy. At collecting stats, he was just—he was very mechanical. Uh, you know, the 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 negative word there is vanilla, but he he wasn't. He was exciting to watch, but you were watching him more for how he was playing the game more than noticing his stats. But he was always getting the stats, and uh, good for him. Definitely deserves. Yeah, and, uh, thing now I- he looks like Zion Williamson. Yeah, now he's a big boy. But he, he, unlike Zion, he doesn't have to be healthy anymore. You do you, Zach. The only thing I regret, Zach Randolph, is that you never did it for our Knicks. That's the only thing I regret. But he was also on his team. It was a bad, bad team. It was him, I think, Eddie Curry, and one, and uh, and David Lee. You have three undersized, three, three redundancies. If if there's ever been, there's well, ever congratulations, been Zach Randolph. It's an honor. It's, <laughs> good old Isaiah. Gee, that God, that guy could not put a team together to save his life. But hey, you know what? He's done something I haven't. And that's uh, being executive of the NBA. That's fair. All right, let's start off this. Uh, let's get the into list. the actual list. The list. We got uh, Portland uh, is struggling. They are three and seven. They are on a, in the last ten games. They are on a four game losing streak. Um, <clears throat> they are looking at possible trades allegedly. Uh, 
Dame or McCollum, but now McCollum is out with a collapse, collapsed lung indefinitely, uh, which obviously will be uh, an issue with trying to trade him. Uh, Dame, there's conflicting news about whether or not he wants to be traded. Um, there's also there's a, news there's that he update. wants to, if he does get traded, he's going to, he wants to go to the Knicks. Uh, his camp apparently says he wants to go with the, uh, that wants him in the Sixers. It's all very weird. There's an important update to this story. The trailblazers reiterated that he, Lillard is not available to be discussed. Sources told ESPN. Yeah. They're, they're lying to themselves. <laughs> I'm with you on that, Goer. That's what that's the latest I got on that. So I just wanted to make sure that that was out there. No, I mean, there's they'll say that for now, but like as it gets closer to the, I mean, what uh, we have the uh December 15th is coming up, then you have Dece- uh January 15th where even more players become available. And you know, when teams are like are 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 desperate and they're like, hey, we could use him, and the Portland Trailblazers are still four games under 500. <laughs> Don't worry. So don't, As we get closer to February 10, I'm sure action will heat up. I don't fully – first of all, I don't fully buy into this. You know, we, we do this show week to week, and we say, oh, this team is now three games over, two games under, one game over, one game under. This idea that we should be looking at wins and losses in December uh, is is becoming increasingly a joke because, we, we you know, we talked about the over 500 Timberwolves last week. And now this week, no one even thinks, well, no, we talked about the 500 Timberwolves. And then Kevin pointed out that the day after they went over 500 before dropping back to earth. And now they're probably a week from now. It wouldn't surprise me if we're talking about, you know, we were just talking about the 11 seed Sacramento ending the playoff drought, just implying that Minnesota's going to fall out because they're the 10 seed right now. Good old side game lose streak. We'll do that to you. I don't fully buy into, you know, counting wins and losses. And up until this week, I was, I was with, Kevin's report. I didn't see Dame going anywhere. Portland needs a champion right now, especially in the wake of all of their GM nonsense. But CJ McCollum shakes things up here a little bit because now out indefinitely last I checked and and that's going to be tough to overcome. Because now you have to you have to choose your you have to it's like a it's like one of those create your own ending stories. You have to choose your narrative here. Do you just let the season fall where it is? And if Dame gets angry, you say, well, your your 1B was hurt. What do you want from us? Or do you say, we're clearly not going anywhere this year now. Now is the perfect time to rebuild because without McCollum here, we're not going anywhere this year. So they have more incentive now because of McCollum to either say shop is completely open or shop is completely closed. So I feel like a week ago they were more inclined to make a minor move. Now they're more inclined to either make no move or all the moves. Yeah. Buyer I mean, beware on Damian Lillard. Lillard wants to play until he's at least 36 because before the Trailblazers said no for the moment on him, he did want to sign a two-year contract extension to make it to 36 years old. So buyer beware. That contract extension is going to be very expensive. He's also uh, statistically, if I'm not mistaken, he's having a down year. Yes, that is true. Across the board. Um doesn't stop him from making demands, but just be aware of that. Trade now, again, stat, stats are another thing that are always a little – because you add in that, you know, they they added in, you know, Robert Covington to take more shots. They added in Larry Nance to get a, little, a few more rebounds. You know, you make the team better, the counting stats are going to naturally go down. In a 20-game sample, percentages are always going to be slightly skewed relative to an 80-game sample. So stats from, you know, in December both are always defensively skewed. Um, but the one thing you can say right now for sure is that this team on paper is not where they expected to be because on paper they expected to have two studs, Lillard and McCollum. And right now and for the foreseeable future, they do not have that. So they need to decide, are we just using the injury as an excuse or are we using the injury as a motivator to change this thing up? A quick update on that contract extension uh, John Wall will be cheap compared to Lillard at that point because the two years could be worth a hundred seven million dollars. And that's the thing. Like, do you want a thirty-five and thirty-six-year-old who's starting to? And he, he, you, even with what you're saying, he still does look like he is declining, right? Do you want that when you already he is, and he's what thirty-one? He's 31 even if it's right just now. a down year and he bounces back, still, 
35 and 36 years old is is an older player. LeBron is is a, a freak more so than anything, and it, and I mean that in a nice way. Uh, that you're not going to be almost 40 years old putting up MVP like numbers. Just for most players, it's just very difficult. Maybe time. because the game the game switches has switched to uh, more shooting than uh, than basket driving that will help. And he is a type of player that is like that. So a shooter, him being a shooter does help extend his career. Maybe if he doesn't take this massive extension, he just ends up becoming a bench player, which is, there's nothing wrong with that either. But, you know, a lot of these players don't want to be that. But the other thing is, remember, you're probably not getting an offer to Portland from a team where he would be the be all and end all. You know, he's probably not getting treated to, you know, the magic for a slew of their point guards or getting treated to, um, you know, getting traded to the Thunder. You know, he'd be getting traded to a team. Like, let's say he goes to the Knicks. Well, Randall can do a bulk of that offensive grunt work for him. Let's say he ends up somewhere with Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons can do a, gr- a you know, a bulk of the, you know, the grunt work for him. So the the logic here is that he goes somewhere where he is slightly more protected in terms of the amount of work he has to do, which will naturally take away, you know, the effort making what he needs to do easier. You know, part of why he's declining is because he's now a 30 something year old expected to carry a team. If you trade him, it's supposedly to a team where he's not solely carrying the team. So I definitely still invest with him. If you know, invest in him, if he has a one B with him. I I understand that. It's just a matter of that much money. And I, I just find like, see that as a hard thing to sell to any player entering their year 35 and 36 being all, you know, a two year, you know, we're talking about 50 million plus a year. Yes. It would be 53 and a half million dollars a year. That's so much money. And how much of that is, is of the salary cap will be by then we don't know. So that's also part of it. It may not be a huge percentage. I don't quite know if the NBA has an escalating salary cap like the NFL does, but. Those numbers um, are yet uh, ex- yet to be exactly calculated, but that's the initial report on the extension that it would be 107 million dollars over two years. All right. Well, let's let's move on to the next. Uh, we have uh, Tibbs came out and said that Kemba Walker will not play if he is not starting, and Kemba is handling this extremely well. It was already known that he he was benched and that he was out of the rotation, but now it's come out officially that he will not play at all unless he's starting which is silly as heck to me i don't understand that uh but you know i mean especially when your team is struggling to generate offense and this guy can you know we don't he could just have been struggling early on because it was you know he hadn't played you know in a while we don't know Uh, we are talking only 27 games in the season I, i think it's hasty to have Pulled him entirely from the lineup, and now the fact that he's saying even like later on he he doesn't seem to be even willing to put him in is is odd to me. There's a possibility, uh, Michael, that um, Thibodeau was annoyed that Walker chose to sit out for load management uh, right before the announced benching and rotation pull. There's a theory about that that. What, but then Thibodeau, Tibbs needs to be out of the league. <laughs> I mean, like, just you have to get over yourself as a, you know, I mean, he, you, you can't be bigger than, you know, your ego can't be bigger than the team because that's just going to, you know, hurt the team. It's moronic. It's stupid. It's dumb. I can't say most of the words I want to say to describe this comment um, for a number of reasons. First of all, you cannot tell me for a minute that Kemba, if for no other reason being microwave offense, doesn't have a role in this league. Secondly, if you have officially decided he has no role on this team, you need to sell him to other teams. You need him to play so you can you can then have a value for him so you can trade him. Because right now, one of the notions around the league is that he is too old to play anymore. So if that is a believed statement, he, he has, has no, no trade, trade value. value. So if you want to trade him, you need to play him. If you want to use him, you need to play him. There is no reason not to play him. This is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard, and it's quickly making me get very off the Nick train very fast. It is stupid. It is. It is. I. Uh, th- from how good he coached last year to how poorly he seems to be coaching this year, it just su- is surprising. 
Yeah, it's it's I don't and I, I don't the literally the only thing I can think of is there are there I can't even say they're a younger team, but I I, I mean was you know they were doing much better at the beginning of the season, you know, finding magical ways to keep this team together when Austin Rivers was there. Is is that the problem? Do they need some sort of veteran shooting guard who can just say Nobody panic. Just give me the ball. We'll be fine. But, but then that, why can't that be Kemba? Exactly. It's Kemba anyway, then. Just let Kemba shoot in the fourth quarter. Just sit him for 36 minutes and then bring him in. If the argument is, oh, he needs, you know, he's not that kind of guy who can come right off, let him play five minutes in the second, five minutes in the third, so at least he's warm. But I, I on paper, they're essentially mostly the same team. Bullock for Fournier is not the difference of I know what to do with them, I don't know what to do with them. And if Tibbs didn't have a say in this team, this whole team needs to be imploded, but we're assuming Tibbs at least gets asked, "Hey, do you are you okay if I pay a zillion dollars to Evan Fournier?" And he should have stepped in at some point and said, "I don't know how to coach that type of player, or I need this type of player for <laughs> my <who>? team." Right. <laughs> but it's it's unbelievable that Tibbs went from one of the t- him and Monty Williams were light years ahead of third place in the coaching debate last year to now I start to question everything he does. I, I agree. There's nothing there's nothing in that I would disagree with. I think to add, I think the one thing I would say is it's not just Kemba Walker. I mean, Thibodeau is making an, an example of Kemba Walker, but he's Kemba Walker is not the only one who's disappointed. Fournier has pretty much disappointed. Even, even the main man, Julius Randle, has disappointed, as evidenced by this afternoon's game. So I, I think it was... I think the it only was player who puzzling. hasn't disappointed is Obi. I think it's puzzling that, uh, you know, uh, Thibodeau pulled Walker after only 20 games, but yet is letting Fournier still crap out in the rotation quite a bit. So, I don't know. There's something going on there. And, and I, I agree with what we were talking about early in the season is maybe just give some, you know, Fournier some rest, maybe have him come off the bench a couple of games, um, see how that works. Because, again, he seems to have always been a better bench player than he is a starter. Um, some players are like that. Uh, on to the next part of our list we have here. Uh, there's a major COVID outbreak in the NBA. I think the Bulls have nine players. Nine. <laughs> it's 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 one of those nines because one one became the ninth just as Kobe White's coming back. So it's like a it's like an eight nine, you know. But the point, it's a lot. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna sit here. <laughs> oh, and, I'm sorry. We're not gonna sit here and count deck chairs. The point is, it's a lot. Um. Now, sorry, finish the thought, and then I'll, I'll go back to the Bulls. The, but the, the, the Bulls season. have eight to nine. Uh, the Knicks have what? I think three is what we said. Uh, we said three, and, yeah. And the Magic had a bunch. Like, it's just it's just crazy that the, the, this uh, – and the thing is that the NBA, I think, is 90% vaccinated So of the players. So we're talking about a relatively high percentage, and, and they're still having this issue, unfortunately. But that just speaks to the uh, – about the world right now with this pandemic. Yeah. It's on it's 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 you know it can strike at any time and uh team good teams hopefully will find a way to adjust and uh the Knicks just didn't adjust this afternoon that's for sure. I don't know how the Bulls have eight missing out of possible what is 15 men rosters. So because a, 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 a couple things on this. One because they're allowed to now use this emergency, we we got the we got the itis rule that they put in place, which Bravo NBA for at least doing that. Um, they can go up to eighteen guys, so they still have nine guys. The the minute you have to have eight guys rostered, the Bulls are, are rocking nine right now, uh, so they're getting dangerously close. With that being said, as much as you want to just count them out, they lost their last two games by like twenty five points each. The Bulls have five games between now and Christmas. Two against the Raptors, one against the Rockets, one against the Pistons. They could get through this two-week span, three and two. The last one's against the Lakers. We'll call that a loss. But if the Bulls can even go two and three with half a roster, you're, you've got it locked. Billy Donovan is coach of the year. If they could get through two weeks, mildly 500 without a team, which is doable given that schedule. Now, the one thing, and I, I don't want this to get political. I don't want this to... Um, be any sort of view on COVID. But the one thing I will say is when we talk about the COVID outbreak, what we have to remember as always is look at the stats and what are we counting? For example, the Grizzlies were given a 
a, a stat in the COVID count the other day. John Morant has been put in health protocol. I'm, he's already out indefinitely with a, with a leg injury. That that shouldn't – I get why it counts, but it shouldn't count. You can't sit there and go, oh, the Grizzlies are, are down a man because of COVID. No, no. They were the guys down that man already, already. Not playing – tested positive there's a big 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 difference there and when you look at some of the Chicago Bulls who tested positive I'm sorry they weren't going to be playing anyway so this idea that the raw number is reflective of how damaged the league is because of COVID is a little bit now with that being said I'm with you completely it is an issue and if I'm the NBA I do have to start considering you know the NHL skips games you know, we'll figure out when to play that game later. The NBA seems a little more inclined to not skip games unless they absolutely, absolutely have to. I'm sorry, if the Bulls missing nine guys isn't we have to, I don't know what is. So if I'm the NBA, I'm starting to consider, let's take a look at the schedule, see where the, you know, see where the extra games can be put in. But with that being said, the NBA's counting is also a little incorrect. All right. Answer your minute. question. Um, at NBA teams are required are, are allowed to dress – are allowed to carry up to 15 players uh, officially, and then yeah, they're allowed to play carry two players on two-way contracts. Okay. On to the next uh, topic. We have the Pacers are putting uh, three stars uh, up for trade. Um, Can we get them? So uh, that for those of you listening that I put quotes around stars uh, – you know, because there's questions about. Well, I disagree with those quotes. I'll just come out and say it. If you're a Pacers fan listening, we love you. I meant Miles Turner. That's all. I, I love, love you, Miles, Miles Turner. I, I, it seems like he's destined to be a Knicks. I've this wanted point. you on the Knicks for three months. Just come home. Uh, <laughs> so, so they're looking to trade Miles Turner, uh, Karis Levert, and uh, or uh, Sabonis might help. Samantha Samantha. Sabonis. Samantha Sabonis. Yep. Samantha is the bonus. Uh, so. Uh, you know, they are content with a with an actual rebuild. It seems like, uh, and with the funny thing is, all three of these guys are relatively young. That's my thing. What what are you rebuilding? <laughs> to? How is Demontis Sabonis not the part of the rebuild? Yeah, like I get it if you want to get rid of one of the two, right, between Miles Turner and De- and Sabonis because they they're, they're a redundancy. Yeah, I get that. And and but Yahoo, why get rid of Karis Levert? Yahoo had a great article today about the disrespect the big man gets in the league today. So you're you're trading Sabonis, you're trading out Sabonis for a smaller guy to be the rebuild. But you still you still need a center. You know, you still need rebounds. Well, the Sabonis funny thing is though, is Turner is shooting really well from three this year too. Yeah, and now he he's at least getting a little bit more up there in age contractually. He's getting there a little bit closer. I think he's twenty five. But still, both of them are 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 certainly not guys you would scrap. Quote. <laughs> Because I, I want think, a rebound. I think they might be the same age. There's, just there's no, there's zero. They're both 25. Yeah. There's zero. And, and reason. Harris is what, 26, 27? He's right there too. These guys are not guys you scrap because of a rebuild. Their their logic makes zero sense. It's 27. This is the silliest. Harris Levert's 27, yes. You got these two 6'11 guys who are 25, 240, 250. They're almost identical. Can I get a check on what year they both came into the league, Turner and Sabonis? Sabonis was drafted in 2016. Um, I'm looking up. Uh, uh, Turner was drafted in 2015. All right. So almost the same amount of mileage, same exact age. One comes from Europe. One comes from Texas. But one gen- went to Gonzaga. <laughs> generally speaking, yeah. they are the exact same dudes. So I, I understand the the redundancy argument. But the idea that any of these guys need to be moved on to make the team younger, to me, makes Zero sex. I mean, the good news is this is beneficial for the Knicks because the pay, uh, Turner wants to be a Nick. The Knicks want Turner, <laughs> and the Pacers. Are, so af- I think after Tuesday, there's a good chance we see Turner in a Knicks uniform. Go back and check the what? tapes. I've been saying for months now. So Miles have I. Turner, we all we both have. I, I was I was on it from Jump Street. I'm sorry. I'm stealing your thunder. Miles Turner was my. You got to do this Knicks back in July. Just. First of all, Quick Nick question. What percentage all, chance what do you think you uh, Miles Turner ends up a Nick? What was that? What percentage chance do you think it happens? 2%. I was going to say like 15. 3%. Okay. I don't know. What, what milk is in your fridge right now? I don't drink milk. I'm lactose intolerant. Uh, th- then hold. <laughs> I just want to point out that Sabonis. Milk chance. Guys, uh, I want to point out that Sabonis is in the second year 
of a uh, contract extension of $74.9 million. He becomes a free agent in 2024. This is Devonta Sabonis. Yeah, I, I don't see I don't see the uh, Sabonis going to the Knicks just because I don't I think if the Knicks wanted to do that they would have kept. Uh... Now I'll I'll say I'll say this: the reason I do not see the Pacers and Knicks being able to make a deal, and this goes Money. back this goes back to what we were just talking about. Yahoo had a good art had a I mean had an article I don't want to say good article because it made me angry, but had a had a reasonable article about five trades the Knicks could make, and in all five trades, Kemba and a pick were in there. Basically to say, you need to take our mistake and we'll give you a pick to take that burden off of our hands. The Pacers have, A, the Pacers have no reason to take Kemba Walker. And if you're attaching a pick to Kemba and then the Pacers are rebuilding, if, you, if you're sending out a 25-year-old in a rebuild, you're expecting multiple firsts. So now Sabonis comes with the price tag of three first rounders, one to get Kemba out of here, two for Sabonis. I'm not paying three first rounders for a big man in a non-big man league. It just doesn't make sense. You make the argument, okay, well, maybe Mitchell Robinson moves to get them a big man back. Well, you got to figure out if he's getting paid soon, too. He's young, but you got to figure out contractually, can you keep him? What are you doing with him? He doesn't make a ton of sense to move. His contract ends at the end of the season. So, yeah. If you move Randall, it's just a 1B for a 1B. You're just as star studded as you were. They're not moving RJ Barrett. What can the Knicks actually move besides a stupid number of picks, which defeats the whole purpose of what we've been doing? At this point, if you're the Knicks, you almost have to stay the course and, you know, then use those picks to add to what we have. All right, and on to the – we'll just skip that one. We'll go to uh, Rockets are listening for offers for Mr. Wood, and uh, then we'll talk about that. Sounds good. So the Rockets, much like the Pacers, are seemingly unable to decide what they want to do. The John Wall hold suggests that they believe that there might be a future yet, um, and then moving on from Christian Wood would suggest the complete opposite. I don't really, again, I don't really know what the point is of that trade. What are you getting back if you're moving on from Christian Wood? Um, I mean, I guess the idea there is that Sangoon is officially your number one big man. Um, but again, the power forward position exists and Christian Wood plays the modern power forward. So, Kev, do, do you seem to think you know what the Rockets are doing? No, it doesn't make sense. I mean, Christian Wood... Just so, just for full disclosure, he's in the second year of a three-year, forty-one million dollar contract. I don't think that's necessarily terrible that you have to move it, and um, I just don't see why Houston would be looking to deal Christian Wood. It just doesn't make sense to me whatsoever from either a playing standpoint or a contract standpoint. And as, as another note on Christian Wood: he's only twenty-six years old. Why are you moving a twenty-six year old? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. This is similar to your argument with, um, let me see, who did you argue with uh, j- just recently? The Pacers moving yeah. 25 year olds and 26 year olds. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I, I don't see what, I don't know what Houston's doing with uh, dangling Christian Wood out there. Now, the one, the one thing you could say about Christian Wood is that he is arguably the Rockets most versatile trade piece. He is mildly cheap enough that he's affordable to most teams. He is young enough that he's nice, but old enough and skilled enough that he can go to a contender. So do you think the Rockets are just putting this name out to say, hey, we're here, come call us? Because if I'm the Rockets and I'm just trying to get noise started, who do you dangle? You're not going to dangle one of your young guys because that's going to get in their psyche. We know what happened when they dangled John Wall. That went nowhere. Who can you actually, unless you're going to say, hey, who wants Eric Gordon? There's really nobody on this team you can actually dangle. So do you think this is just bait? This could this could be bait. This could be a smokescreen for something else. This could be an attempt to trick trades into talking to them to maybe try to package off John Wall somehow. Um, I don't see I don't see this really going anywhere. I mean, there was a I, I just I just don't see what Houston's doing here at the moment. I think we need to wait and see. What uh, I need to we need a little bit more time to process this and see how a December 15 and B uh, February 10 affects uh, what happens with the Rockets and Christian Wood or some other Rocket player yet to be determined. 
Ab- absolutely. I agree. I think this is more a, hey, we're here, come look at us more than I think it is anything else. Um, as we as we wait for uh, Kilroy to come rejoin us here, um, we'll go to one last topic before we get to the, the main event here, um, which is uh, there have been reports that the Dallas Mavericks um, are quickly learning that Luka Doncic was not as uh, not as well behaved as he should have been in the offseason. Um, he's a little bit out of shape and add that to he relaxed. Uh, he yeah, listened to add, Aaron Rodgers and relaxed in the offseason. <laughs> exactly. And add that to uh, Christoph Porzingis' generally lax attitude about being in a small market um, and you get a general headache going on. Um, so, Kevin, I ask you, is it time for Dallas to hit the panic button? They are sitting currently at, where did we put them? They're 14 sitting and 18, I believe. At 12 and 13. Uh, tw- oh, no, are, 12 and 13. Uh, they are the eight seed. Um, but that puts them in danger of having to play either the Nuggets in a play-in game. They'd be very close to playing the Lakers in a play-in game. You definitely want to get out of that, you know, out of that seven through 10 range. So should Dallas do something? What do they need to do? Is it time to panic? I ask you, Kevin, if you're the Mavericks, what you doing? I think that, uh, I don't, I think it, I think it might be time to, uh, be concerned. I don't know if panic's the right word, but I definitely think there should definitely, there should be concern out there because, the Mavericks uh, have like added some defensive pieces, uh, like Mr. Reggie Bullock, to their team, and you know I thought that those moves would help Dallas, but you know when your two when two of your top players are uh, not quite not quite as serious as they need to be, you need to scratch your head a little bit. And the, I mean I think a- options should be on the table. I don't think it's full blown panic yet, but I do think that you got to start thinking. Maybe there's a shakeup that needs to be done at some point uh, in within the next uh, two years, uh, two, two years, two months minus two days before the February 10 deadline. I think they need a month to figure it out, and then another month to figure out what what move are they doing and how so how to make that move. But I think I think there's still a little bit of time on their hands. Yeah, I mean, they, they're they actually built like a more well-rounded team this year. I mean, Bullock is, is meant for defense, Finney Smith – uh, has something stupid like, uh, or it might have been broken in the last weekend, but he had something stupid like 12, 13 games consecutively with a steal. Uh, I mean, they they have some defensive pieces there. They have two guys who are meant to be able to take over a game offensively. Tim Hardaway Jr. is instant offense. You know, I, I'm with you, Kevin. Maybe look to splash, get a little, you know, maybe one or two more, um, you know, offensive minds. Um, you know, again, you look at the, I, we go back to the Knicks because they're our home base. The Knicks last year ended up as, you know, in the four or five matchup, but they were only two games out of that play-in. And Austin Rivers, of all people, won three games for them in January. You know, you don't need an all-star to win those couple games necessary to get you out of the lottery. Find somebody who can shoot off the bench, have them win you two games, and that might be the difference between the five and the eight. Um, so if I'm Dallas, I'm thinking, how can I make this team deeper? Uh, but I think they did a really good job in the offseason of adding some defensive pieces. I think they are a pretty well-rounded team. Obviously, even if you got to give Doncic a day off here and there just to, you know, rest him as he's kind of getting back into shape. Obviously, if Doncic doesn't want to buy in, the whole thing is, you know, moot. But I, I don't think it's time to hit the panic button. Anything you want to add or onto the onto the last event here? Uh, what did you guys talk about? We just um, had the last guy to talk about. This one? Yeah. Or did, well, let's talk about this real quick. Sure. Uh, real quick before we move on to the last topic, uh, real quick is Kira Lewis uh, out for the season with a torn ACL. Uh, not a real big impact necessarily, but still uh, a hit for the Pelicans. Yeah, if anything, um, you know, if we were playing a game called News or Snooze, a game I just made up, I would tend to lean more towards Snooze than News. If anything, this is a game for uh, this is this is news for for two reasons. Um, the first is that him and Nikhil Alexander Walker, you need to see who is your future there. They're a little bit redundant. So you got to figure out which one are you keeping, which one are you moving on, or which one's your starter, which one's your bench player. So anything that prevents you from doing that is rough. Um, the other thing is the worse this team looks or the worse this team gets, the less inclined you are to rush back Zion, which is bad for this team's both long-term health and Zion's long-term, and health. Zion's long-term health. Exactly. So, you know, you, you want Kira Lewis there to keep the team competitive, to give Zion a reason to, you know, to, to lay off the snacks. Um, but in terms of what it means for the team, you know, this might be the difference between 21 wins and 22 wins. It really doesn't mean much. If you want Zion Williamson to stay in New Orleans, 
this is this is concerning. If you don't care about Zion Williamson staying in New Orleans, this is the 26th letter of the alphabet. <laughs> Fair enough. Mm. Um, on to the last topic. Real, uh, well, we, you know, we can take our time out. Uh, the uh, boy, the West is very top heavy. Uh, the three top teams. It's, you know, very close there. And then it's a pretty big fallout after number three. The Grizzlies aren't terribly far behind, but it is still a pretty big drop off comparatively to the East. The East seems very competitive. I would like to make a note on the Eastern Conference that the top 13 teams in the East are seven games away from each other. The in the West, there's only five, the only the top five game uh, teams you could say that about being seven games away from the top. So, you know, it, it's it's pretty, you know, like uh, if you look at the Eastern standings right now, only one team is below 500. Obviously, I, it is early in the season. I do understand that. Only the 10th seed is the only team not above five, uh, at 500 or above. Uh, we're in the West. You know, the we, we sitting at the 8th seed is 12 and 13. And then the 9 and 10 have is, the same 11 and 15 record. Yeah. And then, you know, you... So it, it it's not a total surprise that Golden State and Phoenix are the top teams in the West uh, and even the Jazz. But it is, you know, unfortunately, the Nuggets had a lot of injuries this year. Portland has seems uh, now has injuries and just seems to not be quite clicking. It could be because they changed head coaches and the, the team's just not quite there yet. Uh, this, for all we know, the uh, once uh, CJ comes back and Dame is 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 uh, in there, you know that team could fire back up into into fourth, fifth place, and same with the Mavericks. The Mavericks are not really that far behind the Grizzlies; they just seem to be slipping. At in, uh, again, it's early in the season. They are three and seven in the last ten, versus the Grizzlies who are seven and three, you know, in their last ten. So that 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 really does happen, you know, affect it and. You know, it's if you it's really funny. The the East is seems to be, you know, 13 teams deep. Like all 13 of these teams, 13 out of the 15 possible teams, all look like they can make the at least the postseason. Uh, you know, uh where in the West you're like you, you know, the Kings are a coin flip, but after the Kings, it's it's a flip, it's a fall off. Crickets. After the Kings, yeah. it's crickets. Again, though, this is it is early and there there is some statistical obviousness to this. For example, naturally, the West is, you know, the the West plays itself more than it plays the East. The East plays itself more than it plays the, you know, the West. So if you're going to have really, really good teams in the West, logically, you have to have really bad teams in the West. It makes sense that the East, whose top is lower, its bottom is going to low. You know, it's we're going to regress to the mean, basically. Whereas in the West, if you have these teams pushing further this way, you need lower teams to you know, be facing this way. Now, because there aren't any or too many really, really, really bad teams in the West, this middle is going to drop down a little bit. So, I mean, there's there's a statistical math behind this. Oh, absolutely. With that being said, the, the real stat here would be what happens when the East plays the West. And I know you have teams all over the place, but like the Blazers have a winning record against the East. The Spurs have a winning record against the East. So, I mean, it's not like it's complete domination of the East over the West. Now you have teams that have losing records as well, but it's it's not as obvious as it seems. But it's nice to see that the East is showing the parody that the NBA Oh, oh, I would definitely say that. And part of that is because the East has had a lot more like three through eight draft picks in the last 10 years. Fair enough. You know, you usually Except have to. The, you still got. Uh, but anyway. But think about when Detroit and Orlando have had, especially Detroit, they've had their biggest picks in the Orlando last couple, a bad a couple oh, years. Orlando's, well, yeah, Orlando's been, an exception like, not to themselves. Uh, Although. Uh, Although Orlando has more wins against the West than the East this year, so do with that fact what you will. That's such a weird stat. And good for the good, you know, good for the Magic. All five of their wins against the—I don't know if that's true. And they have three. They have three against the West, two against the East this year. Is the, that's uh, sad. Two against the Knicks. Two against. Sorry, yeah, that's right. Two against the Knicks. Three against <laughs> against the West. Meaning they're zero and everybody else against the East. That's that's a bizarre. I didn't even consider it that way. That makes me more mad at the Knicks. There are thirteen. Teams Trust me, I feel the same way, Kilroy. Knicks, you got to get your crap together. 
That is. That I'm, is and go, first off, go out and somehow magically work your money to get. They don't have any money. Like the thing is this: like the contracts are so weird. The Knicks. <sighs> By the way, sorry, real real quick, just before we get hit up from the one Pistons fan who watches the show, uh, Jeremy Grant now out several weeks just to make it worse down there in Detroit. So that race for the basement. Just getting stupider. When Stick does he, around. When's he expected wait. back? I think it's three weeks. All right. Kevin, you can check it out. But I, I think it's I'll three check weeks. it out quickly. Isn't he 28? He can get his age too while you're 28 is the number he's going to wear on the Knicks when they sign him in, in a month. Jeremy Grant right now is 27 years old, and he's out at least six weeks. Six with weeks. In We're looking into the new year. Yeah. Yeah. He'll. That's 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 a team that might be stuck at four wins for quite some time. <laughs> Watch, they play the Knicks and they'll, they'll get their fifth win. Yeah, that's true. Eventually, they get the Knicks. They get they get the Bulls with six guys in a, in about a week. So maybe that'll be. A... And then the Bulls are going to win by ten. Oh, yeah. Bulls play the Pistons this week. I got the Bulls. If I was a gambler man, I'm taking the two thirds of the not even the half of the Bulls against the a Pistons. third of the Bulls against the Pistons. <laughs> Demar Derozan, the three of us, and a, and a refrigerator that could make this motion with an arm attached to it. I'll take us over the Pistons. <laughs> Right. Fighting words, Pistons. Fight me in the streets, Isaiah Stewart. I know you'll fight anybody. We'll be very <laughs> Come small. and find me. That's a whole new <laughs> small ball. The Remember, fridge, this guy is fridge. not very big. <laughs> the call fridge. You're you're barely six feet. Hey, Mongo. I'm not Remember, six feet, and Kevin is shorter than me. This I'm guy is not hat. very guy big. A couple inches. No, no, I'm obviously being facetious <laughs> there, but but it's without Jeremy Grant to be the leader on that team. It is now just a bunch of guys who are not ready to win yet, and it's it's going to be real ugly in Detroit for the next six weeks. But uh, at, on the flip side, hey, the, the whole point of this was to see what Kate Cunningham and to see what um, Kevin oh, no, Hayes is, and Isaiah Stores. It's a blessing is, in disguise. This is fantastic. Yeah, it's what they wanted. This so. is what they wanted. I, I, this team needs to be bad now. Yeah, why not? They they need to get the badness out, and next year I think is when we see them. <laughs> I'm going to predict them every middle, year until you know I look what, like a genius. So. You know, what, next year they'll be middle of the pack. I don't think that means I don't. By that, I don't mean like a 500 team. I just mean somewhere between seven and twelve, like, exa <laughs> like exactly where I said they'd be this year, and yeah. couldn't be more wrong about. Yeah. I'm doing it again next year, Dwayne Casey. I got you, buddy. All right, everyone, remember to like, share, subscribe, click that bell. That bell will allow you to listen to not just us and our beautiful voices, but the rest of I-80 Sports and their beautiful voices as well. Very beautiful voices. Uh, and for those of you who do not follow us on YouTube or subscribe or whatever it's called, subscribe, that's what it's called. <laughs> do it. Do that. Or just continue to listen to us on uh, Spotify and uh, all those other wonderful, wonderful Wherever you get your podcasts, podcasts from. Podcasts. Uh, can't remember the word. That's spots. okay. Let's call them spots. Spots, sure. That's not the word. Platforms, <laughs> that's the word. Platforms. 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 Anyway, again, thank you all so very much. Comment down below about what's your favorite Jets-themed <laughs> Jets. Who's your favorite New York Jet? Don't pick Ben Graham. He's mine. See you, everybody. <laughs>